one thing that Osante says is on the side of right, but it has a very special meaning or a deep meaning. He says, I'm not a teacher. He says, I, I just practice or always intensely. I broke practicing and practicing in both translated different ways. And then he says, my teacher, he says, is the very universe. This is by itself, I mean, there's a typical Osensei statement, and um, it has that quality of anything he says, but there's something in it like a poem. But there's a special meaning to it, which eventually I'll try to develop on the site, which is we all want to have teachers and parents, you know, and uh, the society and the, everything, you know, presents itself that way. The state, to some degree, presents itself as your parent taking care of you. And religions, and then the priests and the, the masters in religions, you know, not all but most, right, present this. We get caught in this. In Aikido, of course, we have this too, so we have all these this, this relationship to very you know, senseis and teachers and blah, 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 blah. But there's another quote from the sensei which is very important. It's not yet on the side, but he says, you only can learn a small amount from your teacher. Now, of course, my way of teaching is not really teaching. I'm a choreographer. The way I lead the class is really more like a choreographer than a Buddha teacher or a teacher. Um, so it's a little bit special. Because I can, you know, I'm aware of the meaning psychologically and spiritually of and the gesture in the way that, you know, like you turn your head away or crunch up or any of these things can extend. So I point those things out to you, right? And if you see choreographers working with dancers, that's how they look. Right? Because, you know, it's not Traditionally, as also it says, the Aikido teacher, the Buddha teacher, just showed the move, <laughs> and then people did it. You know, it's up to you to get it. And of course, that's that's true. That's true. When you get something yourself, you know, even if it takes longer, get it yourself. There's a special, you know. But uh, anyway, in terms of, of this this thing, just I'm not a teacher. Right? And we want to have a teacher. Of course, what I want to say is I'm not a teacher either. I'm a choreographer. That's different. Right? I'm working with, as a choreographer, we work with the, the spiritual intent and, uh, you know, in the mood rather than... You know. So he says, my teacher is the great universe. Right? He also says, he also talks about the Aikido, different ways at times. He says that Aikido comes from the Kami comes from the soul, <laughs> comes from the universe. What he makes clear is it's not made, it's not human made. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, traditionally, there's, there's this kind of relationship with nature, which is traditional in Buddha, in traditional Buddha, like to, you know, to watch how the wind flows and the leaves flow, and water flows, and all that kind of stuff. You can get that in the universe. The universe, right? So, to my experience, the only viewpoint which looks at the universe the same way as Osense that I can find that is really almost like a double of what Osense says is Buckminster Fuller. So I have a lot of stuff I put a little bit on, but I'll put a lot more on where you can get that. Buckminster Fuller sometimes he thinks he calls, at one point he calls the universe the synergy of synergies. 
Sergio Sanchez. So synergy, of course, you know, is um, in the most simple terms, scientific terms, it's like when you make an alloy. You make an alloy, for instance, an alloy which is based on strength, like, say, chrome nickel steel. The power, the PSI of chrome nickel steel is, is much, much higher than if you just added up the three PSI of the chrome and the chrome and steel. Right? And it's no way you can predict that. There's no way to predict that thing, right? And that, that extra thing that comes from interrelationship, right? Synergy. So then, Buckminster and Buller called the universe the synergy of synergies. about it, you know, who else would say that? You know, you look at various scientists and mathematicians and philosophers, who would, who would, you know, you know, that phrase comes out of really a, a unique view, uh, which is Buckminster Fuller's view, which is quite, quite common with those concepts. Though some say, even you know, there's a quote that I said many times, he said, I don't see the need for technology and machines, but if men must make machines, they should make them with key point in the center. Right. And Buckminster Fuller talked about stage one and stage two evolution. Right. Stage one is the evolution, which is essentially completely congruent with the way the universe works, or the way, the, you know, things happen in the universe. And stage two is what human beings create forms and, you know, machines and whatever out of, you know, usual stuff of fear and greed and, you know, competition and all that kind of comparing, all that kind of stuff. Right? You can't leave the universe, so those things are not out of the universe. But yet there's a difference between the level of what you call stage one and stage two. In stage two, evolution forms will still, at some level, have an, a stage one effect, but it's not the same as stage one. So there, are, there is stuff like this one. And of course, to really explore into this and to understand it or to get it and then to have it somehow manifest in your in the practice, in your moves. This, of course, is bun. The bun hap of bun and bun. It's as creative and as profound and related to the truth as the moves of Akita are themselves. And, of course, it's important to know that because we want to believe what goes on in school. We want to believe that the six that gave us in school means something. We want to believe that this whole thing, you know, and we go, oh, we don't want to. But of course, those desires, those dreams, from a, from a straight Buddha standpoint, they will not allow us to function under the pressure of life and death. You know, because we want to hold on to the dream. Or we want to hold on to life. That's why in the old Buddha, the old fighting Buddha of Japan that started in the Middle Ages, right, the first thing that they tried to do was to move the, the, the practitioner out of fear of death. And they, they did pretty well, of course, so it was part of the culture. 